Father said to me, I'll take you along the pit. And uh, Hello, but he says you're not going down below. And the, the boss said, oh, you can go down below. He says, I don't want them. So come on. But I did end down the pit uh, 15 years later. Well, I took my own son uh -huh. when he was falling in the half of the pit. And he says, Dad, I don't want to go down there. I says, come on. No. Yeah. Yeah. This was so the manager's house. Yeah. And he used to watch the men go to work and come back for breakfast. <laughs> it shouldn't do, like, you know. But uh, that's what they used to do. But no, you cannot see, you cannot see anything now, probably. It's just a heap of rubble. Both uh, the pit heads is gone and the big buildings. Well, you can see, you can see the, the machines there pulling, them, pulling it away. But uh, we'll always have the photographs of the, of the mine. I said, there's a time this me helping them. Aye, and I wouldn't help them either. Uh -huh. They've got all the shares, man. Same way we have the shipyards and everything was snows. And yeah. They've got all the shares and, and, and everything what was going on different to the, the shipyard, man. They've got everything. But, but look, man, you can't get nothing off them. Uh, the, the, all what they think about is putting the working class people on the door. Uh -huh. That's all they think about now. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. It's about time now for the old pit watch. We'll have to go. That there is still going after, say, 50, 60 years, it's, it's gone. So it might send me out. In the old days, when we were at Pace's West, that's, uh, I remember when I was about 14 years old. I passed the labour examination at, <laughs> at 13 and a half and I couldn't go down. I worked at Walter Wilson's, uh, Walter Wilson's shop, you know, them big shops, Walter Wilson's. You have seen those shops, Walter Wilson's. I worked in there. Now what I had, six, shil six bob a week, six shilling a week. That's like 30 pay now for a week. Uh, taking groceries out. <laughs> uh -huh. I had to seven better, taking the groceries out, 30, 30 pay a week. 30 pay a week. Uh, it's like six bob a week we had. Then I, uh, when I was 14, I went on to the bells. I got 14 shillings then. And that's like about 70, uh, 70, 70 pay a week. Uh, uh, that was the old days. Uh, what was, was uh, the bells? Uh, my, my father, though, <laughs> he was a proper slave, my father. He was a bun master. He was on that photo, I want to show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you showed me. And it was music daft. It was music daft, but uh, as the garden walk, he was a proper slave. There was be four of them. Jordy Siddle, Ben West, Michael, Michael Wongs or something, and my father. And Craggs, the one he used to come in, he used to say, how many ways are getting the small money? Oh, he's getting seven. Get on money, you can get eight. You can get eight. <laughs> uh, the bosses used to take this one, slugging against each other. One, well, he wrote the yard, same, you know, voting in the yard, aye. Uh, Got on money, that's my father. They called me father money, say, you can get another t t one on top of that. The boss is just taking the money, man. And they, they, they're daft enough to do it now, you know. They were. But I was my own father. I took 50 years in the pit and I got 200 pounds. That's what I got. <laughs> uh, I've had more fights than enough with the bosses and that. Yeah. Uh, it was all fighting them days. Like you, had to be fight, you had to fight against them. I uh, yeah, heard that. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what happened once down at this colony now. <laughs> there, was, uh, there was a woman and another fellow and me. They were coming up this drift. There was like a big drift, you know, say. And there's drummers coming down and the phone's going up, say. And uh, this, uh, the, the, this morning, we all got on, we had a row or whatever, right? Oh, that tired, you know. Whatever ride up this drift, this long drift, oh, maybe it's nearly half a mile long. I tell you, we'll get on with it. Jack Bentley comes. That's the other one. He comes up with his, under Mr. Shifter. And he comes up and he caught us. 
Because it comes to the office tonight, come to the office tonight. So I went to the office tonight. They find us a pound. They find us a pound. And now it happened. No, the pitch was working a short time that time, about three days a week. No, there was five of us in family then at the time. There were not six, there was only five of us. And so I, I, said, I said, when I got my pay, we only worked three days that week, there wasn't much on the note, you know. So Mr. Robinson was managing down there, and I says to him, I went, when I got my note, I went out and I saw him, Mr. Robinson, you stand at the door exactly. Mr. Robinson, I said, you'll never look at that. Uh, not, not bloody much, he's always a swear, you know. Oh, cuss a lot. Not bloody much on here, see? And I says, no. Uh, he says, what's this for? A pound fine. I says, it's for riding up the drift. He should bloody well ride up the drift, you know, see? My, the, my, the big fellow he was, <laughs> I says, we well, know we're in the wrong. But I says, look at I says, he's kept it off. I says, I've got that to take home. I just said, a few shillings, that's all I was to take home, you know. I says, that's where I've got to take, take up. And I says, there's five on a stick here, but there only had three in family then, not the four. It was the four I was born. I says, that's the fee, five on us. I says, not much, but he says, no, you shouldn't ride up the drift. You shouldn't ride up the drift. No, that thing's gone down, you know. I says, no way. And uh, at the finish, I talked to him. I said, wow, I says, can I, we can't live on that. We can't get a bite to eat with that, see? He says, I'll tell you what, go in there, say, Mr. Hurriots. He said, get a hard bounce for that pound. He said, you can pay it off five bob a week, say, four or five shillings, say. I said, right on. Went and saw Mr. Hurriots. He says, he says, advance note for a, for, for a fine. You've been fined a pound, you want an advance note? I says, yes, Mr. Robinson says, I've got to have it. Aye, Mr. Robinson says, I had to have it. No, he says, I can't do it. I says, well, I said, Mr. Robinson's out here. I says, I'll go and fetch him in. I got to the door, he said, oh, all right, come back then. He made his advance note and I got the advance note and it was kept off at five, five bob a week after that. Uh, I got an advance note from the pound. <laughs> and now, I my customer was out. Because it had only worked three days a week before, say, and I only had three days pay. Yeah. Nothing. This is where the great charge was between the miners and the police. And they were shouting Zulu, and they charged and clashed. There was a lot of, quite a few injured. And they used the officers as for the, for the injured. Then they went in the pit yard and turned all the motor cars over of the buses. So it was, it was 3,000 3, police here and you couldn't get stirred for police. But uh, that was it. The, the, men, the, the men charged and some got taken in, into custody and the others it was all right. But the, you couldn't get stirred for police. So that's it. That was your gambling, your gambling money. Well, the bridge down here, that was famous for its uh, for the gambling. There used to be always 40, 50 men more down here gambling. Okay. That was every weekend. Yeah. Every weekend that was. Some of the women never got the door, the money. <laughs> and these are the garden allotments. Uh, what the miners are, the garden allotments. You see, the miners have two great things in common. That's the allotments and greyhounds. They are greyhound racing. Well, they are the allotments because they grow lakes. And they are lakes, mind. The great big fat lakes. And every year, the older competition, who can grow the biggest lake? And there's generally a few arguments like, but uh, the judge settles that. But these, they all these lakes. But uh, I don't think there's any, there's none in the present, no. Uh, it's in about September when you get, that's, to the, that's just uh, next door will be uh, going. <clears throat> and they look after the lakes better than looking after the wives. <laughs> they do. Right. So that's it. And if you look back, 
over the history of the Labour movement and of the Labour Party at every critical stage. It has been the miners who have given the lead, Tommy Hebben in the 19th century, whom you honour in the North East, Keir Hardy, the Scots miner, who was the founder of the British Labour Party, A.J. Cook, who fought against the government during the great general strike of 1926, and Naren Bevan, the Welsh miner, who gave us the National Health Service, which is the greatest socialist enterprise ever undertaken, and I might add, also the most... And we must also learn from the lessons of the last 15 years that trade union rights must be restored by the next Labour government. Now, this is a tremendous gathering. I first came in 61, 33 years ago, a third of a century ago, and I remember so many of those galas so clearly. In 64 were the dying days of the Macmillan administration, and Harold Wilson spoke on the platform. He was the one who talked about the white heat of the technological revolution, and what he was saying, you know, people don't always understand it, he said, if you allow technology to be introduced without socialism, people will be burned up by unemployment. And that is exactly what has happened in the last few years. I came in 1974, just after the miners' strike, when uh, Arthur played a part at Saltley with others on the eve of, or just on the morrow, of the election of the Labour government and you don't know where you've got to go next. And I would say one lesson that I think we ought to learn. The Labour Party and Socialists were not established in Britain to be the intensive care unit for capitalism, taking it over when it fails, putting it back on its feet and handing it back to its pri previous owners. Because that is the way in which it is seen. Nationalisation of the pits for some, was seen because they were bankrupt like the railways. And when the investment went into the pits, then you sell them off again. And the same with the railways and other industry. We have got to see that this time the crisis we inherit is made the occasion for fundamental change and not the excuse for postponing it. Oh, yeah, all over Europe in Belgium. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would like to have your message for my workers yeah. all over Europe, especially in Eastern Europe. Yeah. But it's closing down also. Well, I mean, what's happened in Eastern Europe is very simple. Nothing to do with democracy. They wanted to colonize Eastern Europe, where there are raw materials of value, highly skilled workers, low wages, and they wanted to colonize it. Thank you.